Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for joining today. So we are back in the garage. It feels like it has been forever since I have been in the garage. It has simply just been too cold here in the garage. So today I am going to do a quick review, a discussion about this table saw. Now I have had this table saw for the better part of four years and it occurred to me that I haven't really talked about it too much, but it has been my go-to tool in the workshop now for quite some time, and it is a fantastic tool. There are a couple things, however, that I don't particularly care about it, and we'll get into that in just a minute. So let me go ahead and switch the camera angle a little bit and talk about some of the features of the tools, and we'll get into the pros and cons. So the table saw we will be discussing today is the Delta 10-725 table saw. It is a standard 10 inch table saw with a 13 amp capacity on 110 volts. That means it comes in right around 1.6 horsepower, so just shy of 1.75 or 1 and 3 quarters horsepower. So it has a number of features that I will walk around the machine and show them to you. But right off the bat it has this lovely rip fence. It is a T-gliding rip fence, so it is super secure and it does a wonderful job. It has the power switch right here on the front, however it does not have any sort of child lock or the little pin that you can pull out. You can adjust the blade up and down from the front adjuster here as well as the tilt on the side. So the mechanics of the machine, they work very well. The blade goes up and down very easily as it does tilt left and right. Maximum tilt is 45 degrees uh, to the left I believe. Not really sure now that I think about it, but I'll put it uh, maybe in the comments down below or on the screen right here. The saw does come with this mobile base right here. It comprises of a little lever on the side here that you push up and then you wheel it around on the two wheels in the base and the wheel on the right hand side here. And then when you're ready in position, you can lift the lever and it drops the machine down. There are two leveling uh, feet on this side here where you can balance it out if it is not uh, completely straight where you uh, put the saw down whenever you lift the lever up. So that's a really nice feature and it really helps out when you've got a, a lot of mobility needs like I do here in this garage. The saw has a traditional cast iron top here, but it does have these stamped metal wings on each side. So if you're looking for a solid top the table saw, this might not be the one for you. However, I do think that you can get the uh, cast iron wings on the left and the right hand side as an aftermarket upgrade to the specific saw if you're interested in doing so. I think it requires a little bit of work uh, to the rail system here to attach them. I did look into it briefly, but I uh, didn't end up going ahead and buying them, so I don't really know this specifics of them. As I mentioned earlier, this table saw does have a cast iron top here in the center. However, it does have these stamped metal wings on the side. And they work okay. They've held up to the test of time. They're simply just enamel painted. So they have a couple scratches on them, uh, but they're not uh, destroyed by any stretch of the imagination. In the center, you have the throat plate here. It works pretty well. Uh, and then you just lift it with the finger knob here and pull it out. It's got this little hook on the back side here that kind of connects in here and holds it into place. The throat plate does have uh, five separate set screws to adjust the height and make sure that it is completely flat with the surface of the saw here. Over here on the left hand side of the saw you do have a place to store the fence. I'll be honest, I don't think that I've ever put the fence in this holder. It pretty much stays on the saw all the time. And the handful of times that I've had to take the fence off, just sort of prop it up against something because it's only off for a few minutes. You also have a push stick here and a place to store the push stick. The push stick that comes with the saw is one of those sort of traditional chicken wing push sticks. I do recommend that you upgrade this and get yourself a proper push stick if you do end up getting the saw or if you have any table saw really. On the right hand side of the saw here you do have a place that holds the wrench for changing the blades although I do not actually use it I just use a wrench that I keep in the workshop here. You do have a location to store the miter gauge. The miter gauge itself is okay it's not tremendous quality so if you're really doing a lot of those angled cuts you probably want to upgrade your miter grade situation. And lastly, you do have the adjustment for the blade tilt mechanism that I talked about a little bit earlier. This is also where the lever is here to uh, pick the saw up and move it around as well, which we'll talk about some more in just a minute. 
on the back of the machine, not a whole lot of magic going on. Pretty much the only thing back here is the dust port. Uh, the dust port does swing back and forth when you tilt your blade, so that's why this is open like that. Uh, I believe it is intended to be a two and a quarter inch dust port. I have found it to be a little bit undersized and whatever its actual dimensions are intended to be. So I did wrap with a little bit of uh, packing tape there, snugged it up pretty well. Ended up 3D printing an adapter to take this dust port up to the four inch hose that I have for my dust extraction system. So if that's something you have, just be aware that it is not a four inch port. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the features of the saw that I really like. And First and foremost is this fencing system. This T-square fence is the reason that I purchased this saw straight up. In this particular saw class and at this price point, this is the only saw that I was able to find that had this upgraded T-square fence that is very sturdy, it is very beefy, and it is highly accurate. Normally to get a fence of this quality, you would have to jump up to the next category of saws that are in the thousand to two thousand dollar range. But at this uh, five hundred ninety nine dollar price point that I purchased this saw, this is just a tremendous value. And as I said, this is the reason that I purchased this saw over all of the others that I was looking at. Um, it just is a very great value and it has proven the test of time and it works super well. Other features of the saw that I really like are the controls on the front. They work really well and moves up and down very quickly. Easy access to the saw blade here and easy changing of the saw blade. The writhing knife does uh, pop out if you want to do that as well. Everything's really easy to get to and really easy to use on this specific saw. So no complaints on the usability of the saw. It is just uh, top notch and it is a really great unit for the price. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that I really don't like about this saw. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of start with the nitpicky things that maybe are my personal preference, but things that maybe I expected a little bit more for a slightly more expensive saw. And the first thing I'd like to talk about are these, uh, these stamped wings. So these wings, I understand at this price point getting a full cast iron top would be kind of cost prohibitive, but these wings are really not great quality in terms of how well they were constructed. The uh, edges were not really 90 degrees to the top. The holes, although they lined up, they didn't allow enough adjustment in these rails to get everything completely flat and uh, working properly. The uh, fence would catch on these intersection points here of the table to the wings religiously. So I did end up doing some modifications to the holes. I made them a little bit bigger, followed a couple uh, videos that I found on YouTube uh, to really make the saw dial it in a little bit better. And like I said, I've had the saw for about four years. I've tried to adjust these wings maybe four times. The first time I put the saw together, I really worked for almost an hour trying to get things lined up. I actually just tuned this saw up last fall. I went through a deep cleaning and uh, cleaned everything off. And again, kind of took the rails apart and tried to square up um, these uh, stamped wings to the tabletop. You can see here, there is, it is not flat. I tried for a very long time uh, to get this as close as I could. Um, and so really what it is, is you could get the front or the back more or less flat, but you can't get both. And then getting the two wings to align to the center while keeping the bar in the front completely flat and uh, a parallel with the, or I should say perpendicular to the miter bars here, miter slots, was a, a feat in futility for me. Maybe it's this specific saw, I don't know, but I just couldn't get things perfect. I got them close enough for general woodworking, but for a saw that is slightly more expensive, I was hoping for something that would just be easier to adjust. So that's just something to know, buyer beware a little bit, uh, that it's, it's difficult to set up. Uh, but once you get it set up, like I said, I've had it for four years. The only reason I tried to retune this was just me trying to get a little bit of OCD back into this and, and get them uh, completely perfect. But it's not necessary and it certainly works well the way that it is. The other area from the saw that I'm a little disappointed in really is this front bar for the T-bar system. It actually comes in two pieces. And so you attach one, then you attach the other, they slide together. 
And the problem that that introduces is the variability in this connection right here combined with these wings makes it really, really, really difficult to get the bar system aligned to the tabletop. It is, again, not impossible, but I feel like if the bar was one continuous piece, that it would just be a lot easier to set up, and if the holes maybe were just a little bit more precise uh, with the screws, that maybe these wings would go in easier because you could attach the bar to the centerpiece, which is much more sturdy, uh, and then attach the wings later. As it works now, is basically you attach this part of the bar, uh, and then you slide this part in, and then try to slide the wings in, and everything's loose, and you're trying to adjust everything all at one time. I found snugging certain parts down helps a little bit, but you can't tighten everything down because you do need that little bit of extra wiggle room. So that's just an annoyance of my personal preference again. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal. Like I said, once you get it set up, works perfectly, doesn't move. Uh, so that's a good sign, uh, but I'd like to see that upgraded a little bit. So the next area I'd like to cover is really the fit and finish of some of these parts. Now this might be a little nitpicky, but I don't necessarily think so. Uh, so for the metal parts, the steel parts themselves, they have a enamel paint of some sort on them. They are not uh, powder coated as, not, as much as I can tell. It is a paint job. So the center of the T-Track here as well as the front of the fencing system here is steel and it has paint on it. And the paint has chipped off dramatically over the years. And in fact, I had a massive piece of paint chip off the front of the T-square while I was assembling it. And so straight out of the box, uh, it was, uh, let's say, temperamental <laughs> uh, in terms of the way the paint worked. And then over the years, through the general use, not really abuse, but uh, over the years, the, a lot of the paint has chipped off these metal parts. And that is really kind of annoying to me. Again, I think that um, it's just an artifact of the fact that it's paint and it doesn't really look like they, they primed the metal. It looks like they just put the enamel paint straight on here and uh, here as well. So obviously it was clean, but I just wish that maybe these metal parts were either powder coated or had a higher quality paint job on them uh, just to keep the saw looking its best over the years. The final nitpick gripe and or downside of this saw is the mobile base and the way that the mobile base works. So for that, I'm gonna take you down around to the front of the saw here, or to the side of the saw, I should say, and really talk in detail about the mobile base and uh, a what I would call a major flaw. Uh, it wouldn't stop me from perching this saw again. However, it's just something you need to know that it has become one of my biggest pet peeves of this saw since owning it. So now the time has come to talk about the pretty much the one feature of this saw that I am just most disenfranchised with and bothers me the most. And that is the mobile base situation. So again, as I mentioned in the opening segment there, the saw has one wheel on this side and two wheels on the other side. So what that does is it creates a triangle when you're moving it. And so when the wheel is up on this side, it has a tendency to tip left and right on this side. And so as you're wheeling it around, if you're not careful, you can get that tipping action. There has been one situation where I did hit a piece of wood with one of the wheels on the other side. I was pushing it fairly aggressively and it started to tip and it pretty much almost toppled over. Now, uh, it's a big saw, so that takes quite a lot of force, so it didn't actually happen, but it's just become an annoyance of mine, pretty much my biggest annoyance, and the, really the only major defect, I would say, about this saw is this mobile base and the way that it's structured. Now, I have seen this situation with the three-wheeled bases in lots of other tools, so I'm not necessarily faulting Delta per se, but it could be done a lot better. Maybe uh, putting an extra wheel here in the back with a bar connecting the two levers would work or something that just provides a little bit more stability while you're moving it around. I'm not really sure, but just uh, buyer beware if you do get this saw again, that the, the mobile base is awesome, it works really well, but it does have the tendency to do that tipping action. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. It was a lot of fun talking about this table saw, some of the things I liked and some of the things that I don't like about it. But if you're in the market to get one of these table saws, I do highly recommend it. 
it is a massive step up from the traditional sort of contractor saw with this really awesome T-Track fence and this good work surface here. So again, if you're interested, I will leave links down below. This specific table saw is only available through Lowe's. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you gotta go there and pick one up. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. Over here on the right hand side of the saw, you have a lot of the controls here. You have the place to tilt the blade that I mentioned earlier, storage for the, what the hell is this called? What's it called? Miter gauge, it's a miter gauge. <laughs> on the back of the machine, not a lot of whole metal. <clears throat> On the back of the machine, not a lot of hole, not a lot of hole. Damn it.